Don't get robbed. Let us show you how we manage money for our long stay in Portugal. Wow, I like your T-shirt, Norm. Pink Floyd, one of the best <sighs> bands. Yay. Wearing it because one of my favorite tracks is Money. And we're talking money and how not to get ripped off in Portugal. What do we do, team, to manage our money in Portugal when we're planning our long stay winter trips in the Algarve? I think the most important thing is we don't take too much money. We generally decide on what we might need for about three to four days, and that's all we take with us in cash. And so we go to our mm -hmm. local bank um, where we get a, a good rate, and we ask them for a mixture of denominations of euros so that we can have some small bills as well as big. And then we split it in half. Mm -hmm. Tina has half, I have half. Because Portugal is an extremely safe country. It rates number six on the safety scale. Serious crime is, or major crime, is quite rare. But like any tourist area, there is petty crime, especially aimed towards tourists. And we have a friend who fell foul of that, didn't we, team? Yes, we do. Some friends of ours um, decided to take the local train after they'd flown into Portugal. And unfortunately, he was pickpocketed and they stole his passport and his wallet. Now, mm. a piece of advice could be there for the men is not to keep your wallet in your back pocket. So I generally have cargo pants when we travel because I am uh, have camera stuff and all that, mm -hmm. that I'm trying to beat the weight limit on carry-on because we only ever travel with carry-on, especially even if we're staying two months in Portugal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have my wallet in a cargo pant with a zipper on it um, as an extra layer of security. We think it's realistic just to have three or four days worth of money. That's with the small bills as well. It allows us to be able to pay for transportation from the airport to our hotel or apartment. Mm -hmm. It also allows us to go to the grocery store and buy immediately our, our food for the first two or three days just to get us going. Yeah, and also any beer and wine that we might need to go with the food, Norm. Well, that's important, team. <laughs> that's the most important meal yeah, of the day is that's, beer. That's our priority, isn't it? We basically have the small amount of money. We will pay cash for things like taxi, mm -hmm. um, small items that you might buy in a store, just... You, yeah. You might, you might want a soda or, or a cup of coffee. So we will have cash on hand for that. We don't want to be giving large bills for small purchases. I think that's quite important. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we go to the ATM machines maybe once a week. So we decide that we will just pick a day go and we'll take more money out to keep us going for like the next week. But the strategy about the banks is yeah. you need to go to the main mm -hmm. main banks, um, like Millennial Bank. And when you're looking for an ATM machine, you want to find one that has multi-banco. Mm -hmm. um, there's a logo for that. And multi-banco is very similar to Interact in Canada. It has 27 banks in Portugal who are part of the multi-banco system. So it's very safe. Avoid Euronet mm -hmm. ATM machines. They are extremely expensive. And one of the ways they catch you out is... With the exchange rate, charging a higher than normal exchange rate. So what they will suggest mm -hmm. is... On most ATMs in uh, Portugal, they will say, would you like us to do the exchange rate locally 
into euros from your home currency, always say no, because the exchange rate they offer you is not competitive. They also attach fees to that exchange rate as well. So like that Euronet, they can be charging up to 19% in fees for converting your home currency to euros. Always decline it because your home bank back in the US, the UK, Canada is far more competitive in their exchange mm. rate. So we always pick for our home country for the exchange rate, don't we? Very much so. We decline the local mm -hmm. exchange. And this even happens when you're booking accommodation as well, because we were yes, booking a self-catering yeah. one yeah. time online. Um, we were already staying there mm -hmm. and we wanted to book for the next year. So we thought oh, we'd yeah. do it while we are there. Yeah. So this company that the um, the apartment people were using pulled this prank on us mm -hmm. of saying, do you want us to convert to the local currency? But they sneakily didn't have, they grayed out the button that said no. Yeah, so yeah that was a big learning lesson for us, wasn't it? It was. Hey. So if you ever see that, just don't even mm -hmm. bother going through the process. We, we, had, we got caught cost us uh, some money, but the apartment company refunded us. Worked out in the end, didn't it? It did, but it was very, very stressful. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught with that. I think another thing too is to point out that there is a daily limit at the ATM machines of yep. how much you can withdraw. And I think currently it is 400 euros. But some but, of the banks, do yeah. you know, they will... Uh, only do 200 yeah. euros. So there is a strategy yeah. that complete your transaction at 200, put your card back in and pull out another 200 or give it a try. Oftentimes you'll get that. But we find that for us, that's more than enough to take. I think the whole idea is they mm -hmm. don't want people going and taking a thousand euros a day out. But we're fine with that. It makes us feel quite safe that we're not actually carrying well, around yet again too much money. Well, the trouble is, Tina, yeah. we're poor and we don't have much money. So we, we can only afford to withdraw a small amount. The thing that our strategy is, yeah, let's go and pull 200 or 400. We'll split it between the two of us for safety because we don't want putting this money, excess money, a new wallet into a hotel safe or what have you yeah. because they're not very safe. And so we found that even paying the ATM fee, maybe five or eight euros for a transaction, is cheap insurance mm -hmm. because we don't have lots of money on us to lose. Yeah. And so what we will do is when we go to the grocery store, we will use our credit card for the groceries. Mm -hmm. And the point of sale machine at the grocery store is often the multi-banco system as well. So you are very safe in major grocery stores using your credit card. I think, too, there's... Another reason is that you can actually track when you get back home how much money you've actually been spending, say, in the grocery stores because it'll be on your credit card statement. Yep. So we kind of like that too. And in our case, um, we like to use the credit card when we're traveling, as Norm says, in the grocery stores or paying for accommodation because our travel insurance is linked to our credit card. So we like to show them that we are paying for the trip that we're currently on, that we're being insured for. So for us yeah. to be covered comprehensively with mm -hmm. our travel insurance through our MasterCard, we book the plane flights, the plane tickets, yeah. the accommodation, um, the rental car, if we're taking a rental car. We will use that for the gas for the rental car as well. Um, and then... The grocery store is just a convenience mm -hmm. for us to use that so that we don't have to keep paying out in cash. No. And I think another thing, too, that's very useful is if you're going to be taking taxes, um, is to have cash on you. We prefer to, if we are going to take a taxi, to pay them cash or use Uber because you will have prepaid for that. And that's a very safe way of 
paying for it too. We yeah. we nearly got compromised in Denmark with yes. a taxi um, Ooh, we using did. our credit card. So we never use a credit card because no. they can be skimming it. They can be doing all sorts of fraud. Most taxi yeah. drivers don't. But we just prefer to pay cash um, and then count your change as well because uh, there's obviously <laughs> a few little scams like that. But we started using Uber. We have the yeah. app on our phone. Um, you load up your credit card on the app. Mm -hmm. So that's probably a safer option. Mm -hmm. And one of our viewers recently watching one of our Portugal movies um, was telling us that in Albufeira, um, the average uh, Uber was costing him around 375 euros. Which we thought was really quite reasonable, didn't we? Very competitive. So if you need to take a taxi to the grocery store or come back from a restaurant or something, we thought that was pretty reasonable and a good way of getting around, especially if you don't have a car. Exactly. It really good. If you've enjoyed this movie, we do have a playlist about Portugal and the Algarve. And if you look up here, we will try and put a link to it. Anyway... We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.